Media in Johannesburg, this is The Real Economy Report. Anglo-American Platinum has piloted the electrification of 34 households using a methanol-based fuel cell microgrid over the past 28 months. It will decommission the field trial next month. Skalkberger has the details. Amplet started the field trial in July 2014 and used three commercially available 5 kilowatt fuel cells that charge a 73 kilowatt hour battery bank to power the Naledi community in Mao Keng Township in Kronstadt. Amplat's principal market development manager, Angelin Maharaj, said the field trial demonstrated the feasibility of providing basic electricity services to off-grid communities for household purposes. He added that the deployment of fuel cell microgrids in rural communities also has the potential to supply electricity for small community businesses, for refrigeration for vaccines and for irrigation in agriculture. The detailed data generated and lessons learned from the field trial would enable Amplatz and his partners to design off-grid systems more accurately, reducing the overall size of the systems and capital and operational costs. Angelin Maharaj provides further details. There are 34 households uh, in this community uh, and through this field trial uh, the community has accrued many benefits. Uh, the one is they've been able to get electricity for 27 months already. Uh, they've all received appliances uh, that they've been using throughout this field trial. Uh, for example, they've received fridges, uh, lights, uh, kettles, irons and stoves. Um, in conjunction with these appliances that they receive from us, they are also able to use um, TVs and radios um, and also cell phone charging and laptop charging. Um, we've been working very closely with ESCOM, uh, the municipality and the Department of Energy uh, to ensure that there's a post-trial uh, electrification plan and the plan is to connect them to grid uh, after we decommission this project. Uh, the appliances, including the ready board uh, and the prepaid meters and the energy meters that uh, they have in their households, uh, these, uh, this community would keep, keep all of that. Through this field trial, we've generated many uh, lessons uh, which we will then incorporate in the uh, next generation systems. For example, uh, we the data that we're generating now is very useful data for uh, at the design stage of new systems. Uh, we will be able to use that data to, to better match the community uh, demand with the system and subsystem uh, of, 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 of the generation system. So that's very useful. By uh, matching, uh, getting better matching of those two, you're able to improve efficiencies and you then able to reduce your capex and opex and your levelized cost of electricity. We've also learned that uh, you could possibly use a different battery system. Uh, there's some uh, a, a lot of proven technologies that have resulted in cost, uh, reduced costs, and for technical and cost benefits, we're able to employ different uh, battery systems. The data that we generate here is very useful. It's actual data. Uh, for low profiles of a community such as this. Uh, we did not have this data at the beginning of this trial, so we've had to uh, estimate what that was. And uh, because of that, we over-designed the system. Uh, with, the uh, with this uh, low profile data, ESCOM and the Department of Energy can use that for demand modeling. We will use it for our next generation system design. Uh, the data that's generated here uh, is uh, communicated to WITS University where it's stored in a warehouse. WITS have developed software to uh, make this data available on a web-based portal uh, which is accessible to us for diagnostics, uh, for analytics uh, and for reporting and these reports we then share to the Department of Energy, uh, Department of Science and Technology trade and industry and ESCOM uh, to do a technical evaluation on, on the system, on the key performance indicators, and also to uh, assist those departments with their studies on uh, microgrids and hybrid systems. Other news making headlines this week, New Holdings Group unveils prototype point of entry water filtration system, and an emotional molefe weighs judicial review and future after damning public protector report. Cross Africa Holdings unveils its new Clean Sea Water Filtration System prototype, 
under its newly established standalone subsidiary, Cross Africa Water Solutions. When we started looking at the Clean Sui product range, uh, what excited me about it was the fact that it's actually not a reverse osmosis uh, solution. It's an ultra filtration solution. So it doesn't demineralize the water. And that for me was a huge plus. Then the second thing is the, the fact that that little technology bundle, whether it's big or small, irrespective of the application, there's a package of technologies in that little bundle. And it's the way that those technologies have been bundled together by the Clean Sui engineers in Japan that makes it so interesting. ESCOM CEO Brian Molefe has indicated that he is weighing his future options as head of the state-owned electricity producer following the release of a public protector report. My gripe with the whole situation is that the public protector never called me or Mr. Singh, the CFO, to come and give our version of events. She asked for files. We gave her 120 files in 13 boxes that had to do with prepayment and even prepayment from other transactions. 120 files were given to the public protector. She subpoenaed us and we had a date with her to come and explain what was happening. I would have told her the story if I had been given the opportunity. She didn't. She canceled the meeting. She canceled the meeting. We never appeared in front of the public protector. That's Creamer Media's Real Economy Report. Join us again next week for more news and insights into South Africa's real economy.